in question 55 we are provided with f dash x which is equal to 192 x cube upon 2 plus sine power 4 pi x along with this information is given that f of half is 0 and we have to basically estimate the integration of fx in half to 1. So, for that what I do first is I bound this function f dash x with two functions and say that 192 x cube or else we can say directly say that f dash x is less than or equal to 192 x cube upon 2. I think you can uh, see that I have basically considered the least value of the denominator here. So, that is going to be greater than this function and greater than equal to 192 x cube divided by I take the max value. So, that is 3. So, this bounds these two functions bounds our f dash x. Now, if we integrate the entire inequality in half 2 x. So, in half 2 x if I integrate this is f x half 2 x and if we integrate half 2 x this then after the manipulation you will have here 24 x to the power 4 minus 3 by 2 and here you will have 16 x power 4 minus 1. So, if we put the limit here we have got f x greater than equal to 16 x power 4 minus 1 and less than equal to 24 x power 4 minus 3 by 2. So, we have basically what we have achieved in this is we have found two functions which are bounding f x. Now, we have to basically estimate half to 1 f x dx. So, we will integrate again the entire inequality in half to 1. So, half to 1 f x dx half to 1 f x dx is less than equal to if I integrate this in half to 1 then after the computation this is going to be 3.9 and in half to 1 if I integrate this this is going to be 2.6. So, that implies that the estimation of this definite is this and this is quite a tight range in which we have got half to 1 f x dx. Now, if we see options carefully it is quite obvious that only option d can be assumed to be the correct option the rest all are not. In question 56 we are basically provided with a quadratic equation alpha x square minus x plus alpha equal to 0 and two informations are give, uh, given regarding this first is that the roots are distinct and real makes it discriminant greater than 0 and the second one is that the absolute value between the roots difference is less than 1. So, using these two constraints we have to basically find the set of values of alpha. So, 1 minus 4 alpha square greater than 0 if we solve this alpha comes from minus half to half and we can directly use here root d by mod a. So, that is 1 minus 4 alpha square divided by mod alpha less than 1. So, if we square it this is 1 minus 4 alpha square less than alpha square and solving this results in minus infinity to minus 1 by root 5 union 1 by root 5 to infinity. So, obviously, we will have to take the intersection of all the two. So, we are basically alpha belonging to minus half to minus 1 by root 5 union 1 by root 5 to half. This is the desirable set of values of alpha. So, if you see the option option A and option D seems to be the correct option. In question 57, we are given capital function capital F R to R capital F 1 is 0, capital F 3 is minus 4, capital F dash x is less than 0 that means the capital F x function is uh, decreasing function in the entire interval half to 3. From this I think we it is safe to conclude that in open interval half to 3 the function capital F x is also going to be a negative function because at, at least in 1 to 3 open interval we can say that capital F x function is going to be a negative function because at 1 the value is 0 and at 3 the value is minus 4 and the function is decreasing as the derivative is negative. So, we can say that in the interval 1 to 3 capital F x is negative that is an immediate observation that comes as we see the question. Uh, now, we are basically provided with small f x as capital X f x 
and we are being asked about small f dash one's value as whether it is positive or negative. So we just differentiate the function f dash x becomes capital F x plus x capital F dash x. Now they are asking us about the value of small f dash one. So if I put small f dash one, that is capital F one plus capital F dash one. Now obviously this quantity is a negative quantity, and as I had told you, f one is itself given to be zero. So therefore, small f dash one has to be a negative quantity. So that's easy to understand. After that, they have asked about small f two. Now small f two is two times capital F two. Now as I had told you, ki in open interval one two three capital F x can be safely assumed to be a negative function. So obviously f of two. Is going to be a negative value, so f of two, capital F of two is negative value. Therefore, small f of two is also less than zero. Therefore, this is done. After that, they are basically asking us whether small f dash x is going to be uh, negative or zero uh, in the open interval one two three, or whether it will be sometimes zero, sometimes positive in the open interval one two three. So what we see here is that this particular component of small f dash x. Is going to be negative as capital F dash x is negative in the entire half to three interval. So in one to three, this is negative. Now in capital F x, as I told you, in one to three, this is also negative. So I can say that small f dash x is negative in the open interval one to three. So it will never be zero in open interval one to three. So with this discussion, I think option A, B, and C are correct for this question.